Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this micro-lecture, or not-so-micro micro-lecture, is on Kirchhoff's Laws. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one- to two-sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Okay, so we've talked about uh, current flowing through a circuit before, and before we only had one resistor. So what happens when you have two resistors and there's two different paths? How much current takes each path? That's going to be the goal we're going to try and answer in the first half of this lecture. Well, charge is conserved. Um, it's a moving little particle, so it's made up of mass, and since mass is conserved, charge is conserved. And since current is made up of charge, then current is also conserved. What that means is, we've talked about this before, anytime something is conserved, the amount you have before equals the amount you have after. So in this case, that means the current into any location must equal the current coming out of any location. So if we have one amp of current flowing into this split right here, then we have to have one amp of current flowing out. And in this case, since they're equal resistors, we have 0.5 going here and then 0.5 going here. Um, and then once we get through to the other side, we'll also have one amp of current flowing out. So notice here that since it's conserved, we always have a total of one amp. Now, if we happen to change the resistors so that they're not equal, what happens is, is that the resistor that is the smallest uh, receives the most current because it's the easiest path for stuff to go through. Uh, oftentimes you'll hear people say electricity takes the path of least resistance. Well, that's the case. It's not that all of it takes that, but it's that more of it will take that. So in this case, since this guy is twice as much resistance as this one, this one will get half as much current. You can follow actually Ohm's law using that. And this one will get twice as much current because it is half as big of a resistance. Notice again, though, that the total current coming in, 6 amps, is equal to the total current flowing through both parts and is equal to the total current afterwards. Now, it'll split up and divide into different parts, but it always comes back together and is still the same total. Think of it like water going down a river. There's a fork in the river. We still have the same amount of water. It just happens to split up into two paths, and maybe that fork joins back together, and so we still, again, have the same amount of water. But what happens if the resistors are in a row? Meaning, what happens to the currents if we just have two resistors, but there's only one path like this? Which one gets more current? Well, since current is made up of charge, and charge is conserved, and there's only one path through, meaning we have the current coming out, and it has to go through this resistor, and then has to go through that resistor, and then come back to the other side, that means that since there's no alternative place for it to go, the amount of current we start with over here as the total is going to be the same as the amount of current we get through each of those resistors. So that means this resistor will get 1.5 amps and this resistor will also get 1.5 amps because there's no other path for it to take. So that's Kirchhoff's current law, or also known as the junction rule. Basically it says at any node, this is a node right here, or junction, the sum of the currents flowing in, in this case 4 amps, has to equal the sum of the currents going out, in this case 4 amps. Here we have a more complicated example, we have 6 and 4 going in, and so that means 10 total going in, so we should expect 10 coming out, in this case 2 and 3 gives us 5, and then 5 gives us 10. So that's Kirchhoff's current law. But what happens to voltage in these sort of situations? Because we just talked about current, um, and we will talk about resistance later on. But what happens to voltage if we have two resistors in a row like this, and we have a 12-volt battery? Do they both get 12 volts? Do they split it up? What happens? Well, just go ahead and put your pencils down or stop typing for a second. I'm going to explain this. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, and then I'll have you write when I get to the recap. All right, so we talked about this idea of, or our question is, what happens to voltage? Well, remember that voltage is the energy per unit charge, um, or energy per charge. What that means is, is if we have a charge moving around, so imagine this little charge, it's a unit of charge moving around our loop, the battery gives it energy. In this case, if it's a 12 volt battery, often given with a little plus sign too, it adds 12 volts or 12 joules of energy per charge, to our charge. So in this case, we have that it gives it 12 joules of energy per unit charge. And as that goes around, it's going to um, transfer that energy to the resistors or to each of the resistors. 
Now, energy is conserved, so it can't just like have it disappear or anything along those lines. It means if it has 12 and it ends with zero, because there's a difference here of 12, that's what that 12 volt battery means, then we know that it has to get rid of all 12 along that path. Well, because the battery, so that's basically what I'm saying down here in the text. So because the battery is causing a potential difference or voltage difference of 12 volts, that's what we call, uh, call a 12 volt battery, um, that means that 12 joules of energy are given to this charge as it goes around. So as it goes from the positive side to the negative side, it will get rid of all 12 joules of energy because that's what the battery is doing to it or causing is that difference or change of 12 volts. So that means as it gets to this first resistor, um, this resistor is a little bit smaller, so it's got uh, less resistance, and it's going to be easier for the current to go through. Think of it, if it's easier to go through, it's going to require less energy to get through it. Since voltage is basically energy, that means it's going to cause a smaller voltage drop than the bigger resistor. So in this case, it would actually cause a 3 volt voltage drop. Whereas the bigger resistor, since it's three times as big would require three times as much energy and therefore three times the voltage. So it will cause a nine volt voltage drop. Together, notice though that it's 12 volts total. Okay, now is time to write. So to recap, voltage is basically energy, technically energy per charge. And bigger resistors require more energy to get through because um, they're more resistance. What this means is it's going to cause a bigger voltage drop. Go ahead and write that information down. You might try and repeat that to yourself for a second and go back and rewatch this um, if it's a little bit confusing. All right, so we talked about single paths. What if there's multiple paths? What happens? Well, we know that the current splits, meaning currents coming out of here, there's six amps, four amps goes through the top and two amps goes through the bottom. And then they combine back together for six amps. But we're gonna look at what happens to energy in this case. Well, based on the rule that we just said um, before, actually I'm a little ahead of myself. Um, let's first imagine that each charge, or remember that each charge can only take one path, meaning we've got charge going through and some of the charge will go through this path and some of the charge will instead go through and along this red path where some of it's going to go through the three ohm resistor and some of it's going to go through the six ohm resistor. Well, no matter what path it takes, it has 12 joules of energy per each charge or unit charge, which means it has 12 volts as it goes through. Well, if it has to get rid of all 12 volts by the time it reaches over here to the negative side of the battery, then that means there's only one place for it to kind of get rid of all of that or one thing to cause the voltage drop. This means that each resistor actually gets a 12 volt voltage drop. And really what this means is each resistor is basically just hooked up to the battery in its own separate loop. It's working independently of this guy. So it just acts like, hey, it's hooked up to a 12 volt battery, and it just happens that all of that current flowing out has to be in a common pipeline for a little bit of time, which is why the current increases. All right, so to sum that up, that is actually Kirchhoff's voltage law, or often known as the loop rule, because it looks at how much voltage there is in a loop. And basically, since the energy is, uh, we're talking about energy, um, the energy input has to equal the energy output. Um, so in this case, formally, Kirchhoff's voltage law is the following. The sum of EMF, or in other words, voltage gain, in other words, from the battery, for any complete loop through a circuit equals the sum of voltage drops in that same loop. So if the gain is 12 volts right here, then in a one complete loop or one complete circuit path, there also must be a 12 volt loss. Otherwise, you'd have some weird thing where uh, energy just kind of built up on itself and it would like recreate energy and it would be weird. That just doesn't work. Um, so this is what's going on. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.